Hello there, my fellow implacable Praetorians, and welcome to the month of January, where today I will, of course, start on this month's Primark miniseries. Once again, by popular vote, meaning the votes gathered from the Angron videos, you yourselves have decided you wanted to learn more about Rogel Dorn, the legendary leader of the Imperial Fists. Just like I did before, in today's episode we will talk a bit about Dorn in general, his early years, homeworld, and first meeting with the Emperor. I am your usual host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us see who Rogel Dorn was, shall we? Rogel Dorn, known as the Vigilant, the Praetorian of Terra, and the Unyielding One, was the Primarch of the Imperial Fist's Space Marine Legion, and one of the greatest heroes in the history of the Imperium of Man. A being of thunderous zeal and stone made manifest, is how many described the Primarch of the Seventh Legion. He had a stern and naturally unsmiling face, topped with an unruly shock of short, bone-white hair. His zeal was the fire of a son who believed in his father's dream for the Imperium, without reservation and without question. To Rogel Dorn, there was no higher purpose to the existence of the Legiones Astartes than the unification of mankind, and the illumination of the Imperium's ideals. This idealism drove Dorn and his legion ever onwards, never compromising, never stinting in any aspect of duty. The stone in his soul was his ability to bear whatever his father needed of him, an unyielding nature, which made him both a master of defense in war and an indomitable fighter on the attack. If the Primarchs were the Emperor's nature, split like white light through a prism's rays, as many Imperial scholars of the Imperial Court suggested, then from this point of view, Rogel Dorn was the Emperor's implacable disciple in the pursuit of the cause given flesh, without compromise and in whom loyalty and duty was as integral as blood and breath. It was perhaps for this reason that even before the betrayal of Horus, the Emperor named Dorn the Praetorian of Terra, and drew him to his side far away from the War Master and his newly obtained command. To some among his brother Primarchs, this served only to distance him and the Legion further from them and those among them who had seen the sins of hubris and obstinacy in Dorne's undoubted stubbornness and pride, saw this elevation as just another cause for discord and disquiet. Primarchs are transcendent beings, holding a portion of the sublime and unknowable in their nature. All the qualities which seem strong in the warriors of the Legion exist more strongly, more deeply, and with greater subtlety in a Primarch. Though spun from the seed of humanity, the Primarchs are not human. This nature seems often to enhance and focus the qualities gifted to a legion by their gene seed. So it is that at a moment at which a Primarch and a legion unite, there is often a point at which a legion's character may seem to shift. In the case of the Imperial Fists, the discovery of their Primarch, and the planet which had raised him, only strengthened the character the Imperial Fists had shown since their creation. When the twenty genetically engineered nascent Primarchs were stolen from the Emperor by the ruinous powers and cast into the warp, they were scattered throughout the galaxy upon many different worlds. These worlds, in turn, would shape the nature of each Primarch and later their individual legions created from their genome. When the Primarch Rogel Dorn was restored to the Imperium, it was to be on the ice world of Inuit, located in the Inuit Cluster. Inuit was, and is, a world of death and cold. Its own star is old and withered, bleeding the last of its heat as cold red light. Tidally locked against its dying star, perpetual darkness soaks one side of the planet and faded sunlight the other. Crevasse mazes, frozen mountain ranges and plains of frost dunes cover the planet's dark side. This is called the Splintered Land, the beast-stocked wilderness which shapes the bodies and beliefs of the human population that clings to life here. 
Under the ice crust, thick seas flow in sluggish tides, and pale and sightless creatures swim the waters, hunting by vibration and a preternatural taste for blood. Far above this desolation, great and ancient space stations and shipyards look down on the cold shrouded worlds through perpetual auroras. Created in a long past, these citadels of the void have long looked upon Inuit since before any records or tales can recall. While on the planet, the light side of Inuit offers little more comfort than the dark. Being a land of drift-crusted saline seas, and sparse bare rock under the unblinking gaze of a red sun. There is very little of value on Inuit. Its seas are buried or lifeless, its mountains bare of riches, and its animals vicious. There is, however, one thing that this harsh world produces that led it to conquer a star cluster and endure as an island empire of order in the Age of Strife, its people. Though they are barbaric, they are far from unsophisticated. The warriors of Inuit are raised to endure and survive. The world which bears them teaches them never to relent, and that the price of weakness is death, for them and the rest of their kin. Death comes in many forms on Inuit. In the ice storms that can freeze and cover a man in seconds, at the claws of the predators which roam the splintered lands, and in the lapse of concentration that allows the cold to penetrate the hold. These factors make a certain kind of people. Strong, grim, and dedicated to the survival of the whole rather than the individual. Much of the world's population is nomadic, moving between the subterranean ice hives to trade weapons, fuel, or technology. Conflict between the roaming clans is common, and young warriors learn how to defend against their clan's enemies as early as they learn how to endure the death touch of Inuit's merciless chill. They are very quick learners, have an innate sense of an object's functional value, and most importantly, they have the ability and intelligence to conquer those who possess knowledge they do not. Long ago, before the coming of the Emperor was even a dream on Night Shrouded Terra, the people of Inuit began to create their own realm in the stars. On every world they took, they assimilated, realigned, and reinforced. With every conquest, their culture and learning grew, but Inuit itself remained unchanged, even as it became the center of a stellar empire. The ice hives and clan disputes remained, and while their world birthed starships and ringed its orbits with weapon stations, its rulers kept to the old ways. The ways that had created their power, the warlords and matriarchs who commanded armies among the stars, living their lives little easier than their vassals. So it was, and so it is now. It was as part of this burgeoning empire that Rogal Dorn grew to manhood, and then to rule its domains. Much of his early years remain unknown, or at least little talked about. It is, however, for certain that in the cold and darkness of Inuit, a boy named Rogel, by his adopted kin, rose to lead the House of Dorn, also known as the Ice Cast, and then to the rule of the Inuit Cluster. The patriarch of the clan that raised Dorn had become an adoptive grandfather to him, and taught him much of tactics, strategy, and diplomacy. Even after discovering he was not blood-related to this grandfather, Dorn held his memory in high value. He kept a fur-edged robe that had belonged to the man, and slept with it on the bed every night. His qualities married perfectly with those of Inuit, and he pushed their empire further than any other. Rogel trained and led its armies and fashioned spacecraft the likes of which had never been seen. Forty standard years after his grandfather's death, the outlying imperial starships of the Great Crusade finally reached the ice world of Inuit. When the true emperor was reunited with Rogel Dorn, he regained not only a lost son, but the strength of a star-spanning society already forged into a tool of war. Dorn greeted the Emperor at the helm of the enormous starship constructed during the Dark Age of Technology called the Phalanx, that he himself had rediscovered and refurbished within Inuit's region of space. 
Just like his legion's number, Dorn was supposedly the seventh of the Primarchs to be found by their father. The Emperor welcomed Dorn as a long-lost son, and returned the Phalanx to his care, transforming it into a mobile fortress monastery of the Seventh Legion, which was also turned over by the Emperor to be led by Dorn. Dorn himself was fiercely loyal to the Emperor, from the very first moment they had met on the bridge of the Phalanx, and he never once sought any favor from his father. Dorn embodied the human quest for truth, and could never tell a lie, even if it would evade his cause. Because of this quality, the statue of Dorn stands as one of the only four ever erected on McCrag, next to that of Robut Gilliman, the Primarch of the Ultramarines. Dorn commanded the Seventh Legion and Expedition Fleets with peerless devotion and military genius. It was said that he possessed one of the finest military minds from the Primarchs, ordered and disciplined, but still inclined to flashes of zeal and inspiration. His achievements for the Imperium during the Great Crusade are innumerable. Warmaster Horus himself held Dorn and his Imperial Fists in such a high regard, he once joked that were he and the Luna Wolves to assault a fortress defended by Dorn, the battle would end up as an interminable stalemate. Well, sadly, I guess they did test those words in the end. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about Rogel Dorn's early years and homeworld for today. Is he one of your favorite Primarchs? Let me know why in the comments below. Was this video entertaining or informative? In that case, please consider clicking the like button and subscribing for future content. I thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all an awesome day. The Emperor Protects.